Hey everyone, welcome to our 17th Marfion Custom Microtech Podcast. I have my most awesome son, Anthony Marfion from Heretic Knives. Welcome, buddy. Hey, Pop. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I don't even fucking know where to begin. So, <laughs> you know what? It just, you know, everybody knows in the industry that we're crushing it, making the knives and everything else, absolutely. but it, I don't know where to start. That's the thing. Well, you, know, you know what? Goodness. Yeah. You know what? I want to I wanna hear from you. I mean, because you've been you know, regardless of your time with Heretic Knives. And, uh, but you know, I want you to articulate to the audience, just kind of give us a little fucking one up on, okay, yeah, you know, absolutely. how it started for you. Cause you were the first in. Yeah, I was the first in and, uh, you know, first out. <laughs> <laughs> if you first will. in, first out. Yeah. yeah, yeah Touche. Yeah. You bet. So, you, bet. Um, you know, yeah. uh, obviously you started in, in 94, yeah. uh, but it did start before that, uh, you know, on the Pines of Arrow there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Sean and I, just being little kids, we uh, we saw everything, you know. We grew up, and, uh, you know, just from that small age, we mimicked what you guys did yeah. during that time period. So, I mean, from, from the Pines of Arrow all the way up to me leaving in 2015, 2016, right. you know, we, we aspired to do what you did. Yeah. So, uh, saying that, you know, we, <laughs> we did... We did what you did we turned our bicycles upside down on the back porch <laughs> and mimicked you grinding blades with with pieces of wood and stuff like that and wood chips would be fucking yes. going all over the place and we'd be having a good time and be fucking you're making a mess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know and as you progress there uh you know you moved into the uh the shop off of oslo road yeah. um you know we we helped in the shop we did did all kinds of stuff man from making boxes to running lanyards to picking up the fucking cigarette butts in front of the building <laughs> that's it yeah, that's uh, it we, the cigarette we, butts sean and i did did a you lot. guys did everything you guys from did a everything. very young age so building it built a, a real strong work ethic for us yeah you know seeing how you guys worked and built the business you know it, it transferred from you guys to sean and i yeah and you know we we helped through that time period of the early 90s early 2000s and stuff like that um we uh you know got into the business and we furthered our uh skills under your tutelage and uh you know all the way up until uh I think it was, what was it? When did we start the guns? It was like 2000. Oh my God. 2007. Now what it was is it was uh, 2005 or 2006. Okay. You know, the 2005 well, was, yeah. Uh, it's somewhere around there. It's whenever the year, you know, they, uh, there was a, an assault weapons ban that lasted for 10 yeah, years. 94 to and when that, yeah, yeah. And then when that sunsetted, you know, we, we, we took a proactive approach to making the gun, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was an interesting fucking program all by itself. Yeah. So even if you skip past the fact of, doing the knives and growing up in Vero and everything else, which was, I think, an amazing experience because for us as a family, um, that was probably the happiest years, mm. I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, being in Florida, you know, our family life, just everything else. You know, we learned, we grew up together practically, you know, because you think about it, you know, I was 17, you know, your mother and I were 17. Yeah, yeah. Put this in perspective. Uh, you, yeah. you, when I when I turned forty, you'll only be fifty seven. <laughs> you know, I used to say that when I was a kid, but we're we're Get coming in. we're coming up on that. <laughs> I know. We're both going to be in the fucking old folks. Uh, you're going to be pushing my fucking wheelchair around. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll have to be pushing behind <laughs> you with my electronic wheelchair. Yeah. Be a so, good time. But yeah, I mean, you know, after you put everything in, kind of into perspective of, you know, everything that we've done to that point, but the gun was an interesting thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because that was a, you know, certainly a fucking test, you know, regardless of how the project turned out. Yes, we did end up discontinuing the rifles and everything else, but, um, but a learning experience beyond anything I could have possibly ever fathomed in school, even for you and your brother. Right. You know that was a that was a feat. You know that was a feat of uh, an amazing things. And and again, it couldn't have been possible without you know us as a family unit working on that fucking thing. Because that was nights, that was weekends, that was it, you know we, everything in between, early hours, late nights, everything. We you know lived we still it. yeah we lived it. We lived, we lived it. it. So 
you know, and, and everybody, you know, in the industry, you know, I hate to say it, but respectively fuck off because everybody that's produced guns has had some kind of fucking teething issues at one time or another. Mm -hmm. You know, I trust these guns. I still do. I still shoot them. (laughs) And for some of the people that have them still enjoy them, you know, and even Steyr as a company, I'm not afraid to say it has had their teething issues. I mean, still fucking to date, they can't produce their own AOG here uh, in its entirety. Right. And I say that for the record in its entirety in the United States, when we made that gun, you know, when we made that gun, there wasn't, you know, well, let's buy our firing pins from this guy or buy our no, shit from this guy. No, that was every all. fucking piece <laughs> was made by us in house. Yeah. And um, so it was a good learning experience yeah. for me, for you, for the brother, for absolutely. I think the organization just in general, it taught us a lot about everything. Yeah. Because even now it's even the, you know, the, the model in which we try to even go after our knife market, it's the same thing. You know, a lot of the trials that we had working with distributors and working with all these, you know, uh, rep groups and all these other fucking (laughs) prima donnas and everything else, you know, it showed us that, you know, we can go about it a little bit of a different way. Yeah. But neat, neat program. That was crazy. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was, it was absolutely insane. It just, it, it, we all, again, grew up in it. In it, yeah. um, You know, I think, the gun project right after the gun project is, is really when, you know, Sean and myself, even though we were in the company, we learned, we, you know, scrub blades, we did this, did we, everything. We, yeah. we helped where we could and, you know, eventually became employed by the company. And, uh, but after that gun project is when I think, uh, particularly myself, uh, took a more serious like position in the company yeah. and really buckled down and, you know, instead of just, Oh, we're going to build knives today. It was, uh, you know, hiring, firing people, you know, right. managing, you know, scheduling, you know, being, uh, that, that, that point of the spear where yeah. we drove the company between, you know, you, mom, myself, Sean, you know, uncle Mike, sure, and sure. other, other yeah. individuals at the time. Um, and you know, that we, we continued to build from there and then, it just got a little weird. And then from there, I kind of wanted to do my own thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what, you've done a really good job with everything. I mean, you and Jess, and um, I I know what you guys are doing to get it done. And it's, it it takes a whole, a whole new fucking perspective. I believe that, (laughs) you know, once you do step back and you do your own thing and you have to deal with people, you have to deal with suppliers, you have to deal with all the logistics. I mean, for anybody that's out there making anything here stateside, you know, understands the rigors that go in to doing what you do and you know the advantage yes the advantage is you grew up in it but the disadvantage that you have is your 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 customers the people who buy your products fucking expect exactly they hold you here here yeah exactly (laughs) you know so you know that's a that's a big shoe to fill always Mm -hmm. you know and 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 even now today even though that we we do our projects we do everything we coincide we we coexist you know there's that level a little bit of camaraderie and, and competition right you know and it's like you know the, the the dna that we share is interesting because we both fucking you know get, get it fucking get it done on a level that's tricky you right know? yeah we don't know how to not get that's the project right. finished you know and, and and that's the difference that's the difference that you and your brother experience nothing over you know sydney and adam and stuff like that but they were born at a totally different time right you know they have their own work ethic and own ideas and dreams of their mm-hmm. own but you know for your brother and you yeah you grew up in a, in a totally different time mm-hmm. in a totally different circumstance and I, I i'll tell one story i remember we were visiting your grandpa for christmas and we were going back through Newport Ritchie where you guys, you know, where we're all from and everything else. And I remember your two young assemblies fucking fighting over something just stupid. <laughs> it was like totally stupid. And we ended up fucking pulling in where we used to live in the trailer and said, hey, look it. If you guys are going to fight over this fucking minuscule bullshit, this is where we grew up. You know, so it was a interesting dynamic. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know but as, yeah as as uh as we journeyed through our our yeah. uh, growing of our business uh you know we look back on on some of the things that I, I i used to persecute you for you know in the shop and stuff like that and i'm just sitting here and yeah i, I sit back and i'm like fuck the old man was right he was fucking right and yeah. then i catch jess sometimes she, she's like you know 
I know why your dad is the way he fucking is sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know, uh, it's it's. I've always said I I was starting heretic knives. I I already know what not to do. Yeah, that's true. There's a couple things I I I knew yeah. not to do, but there's a whole fuck ton of shit <laughs> that I didn't even know about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fucking behind the scenes shit that fucking goes on, and it uh, it's like some of the shit never fucking stops. No. But you know, I'm proud that you've taken a proactive approach with your business yeah. and a proactive approach in how you do things, and you know, and that's where I commend you the most. You know, I get it. You could fucking do it. You could do the work. You could sharpen. You could do it all. You know, it's concerning now because at the stage and game where you're at in your life, your age, you know, you got two beautiful children, my grand grandkids, and it's just like, you know, so it's it's just putting some things into perspective. You know, there's there's a shelf life on everything, you know, yeah. and, that, and that's my concern, you know, for you going forward is I know you're going to do very well, but there's definitely some positions that need to be, you know, filled, filled <laughs> for you sure. Know, even for me, it was always that maybe at that level of control, mm -hmm. you know, that I always wanted to be because it was never fucking good enough, you know, and, and, and yeah, our customers sure. persecute us for every last little thing, you know, and, you know, even I heard a little bit today, you know, I know there's some areas that we need to continuously do better, but, you know, don't expect, you know, the guys that are on the line. I mean, they're always constantly trying to improve, but even like in our sharpening, which is our Kung Fu skill that we have, you know, nobody's going to fucking do it like we do it. Right. Nobody, you know, so it's, it, it, it's a constant thing, you know, so it's a, it's a treat when we do them. It's certainly a treat because everybody's getting the best out of <laughs> your brand because that's the essence. That's the... You know, that's when these blades come to life and everything else. The first thing I do when I pick up any knife, I don't care what make it is or who made it, I check, check that fucking the edge. edge. <laughs> if it's not sharp, eh, we got to discuss things. Right. You know, so, you know, it's kind of interesting to that effect, you know, and, and, and as even Microtech has gotten much, much bigger, you know, now instead of me doing it all the time or very, doing it very little, you know, I work on the customs and yeah. stuff like that. When the guys want me to sharpen, I will. If I got to put on a dog and pony show, I will. But, um, you know, again, and that was the, the biggest thing that I've been trying to implore to you is just for your company to grow and everything else. It's going to be really, really tough. That's the next left. That's the next hurdle that you'll need to get through is you're not going to be able to drive your company from behind the wheel of a fucking grinder. It's true. You're just not. It's absolutely true. It's it's where you're at right now, but hopefully, you know, that's going to be, you know, who knows how how you get that accomplished. <laughs> right. You're going to have to put some trust and you're going to have to mentor. I think, and, I think that might know. be the biggest thing, like you said, is is trust. Uh, because, uh, like you said, nobody's going to do it as good as me, but at least with showing somebody how to do it, they can at least try. Because there's there's nobody's going to just walk in and, sharpen my knives for me uh, they're not you know, they're they're gonna need to be taught they're gonna need to be shown and and that's the part of the investment if you think about how many people think about it even in vero beach or how many people we mentored <laughs> across the ages of fucking time yeah. the countless hours of working with somebody mm -hmm. to the point where they wanted it so bad and then once they got it they walked away yeah it didn't matter how much money you paid them it yeah. didn't matter how much fucking kudos they had it didn't matter remember. what I mean, some guys were like, man, I want this so bad, I can't fucking stand it. And then once they got it, they walked. Yep. They didn't even continue a career in the night. No, I know. <laughs> and, and, and that's why I teach, you know, a lot of people ask me nowadays, I was like, what kind of advice could you give me starting my knife company? Learn how to fucking sharpen a knife first. Yeah. And um, that's why I've even often said, you know, I know that, you know, you've mentored people, I've mentored a ton, and I've always pushed the envelope. That's why... You know, what makes Tony, you know, you a strong knife maker outside of all the DNA and everything that follows your creativity and your persistence and your fucking, you know, you, you do it like, like I say, I mean, you fucking work it like, like nobody's fucking bit like me, yeah, yeah. a carbon copy, but it's like, you know how to sharpen a knife. I taught you the fucking right way. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you can grind a blade. You know, you could do all these different things, but once you got the fucking, once you got the fucking honing down, you got the sharpening down to a, I mean, a perfection. Yeah. And, you know, I'm willing to say that against anybody in the fucking industry that would want to go up against you. I mean, that would be a tough one to fucking get doing it the way that we do it. Now sit there. Yeah, we could sit there with a fucking, yeah. <laughs> fucking honing machine and we could fucking do one at a time and polish an edge out and spend 40 in, minutes on a blade. 40 minutes yeah, on a fucking blade. I wish we had that luxury. Yeah, we don't. But, you know, I feel confident that every time I pick up one of your knives, one that you've sharpened and one that you've built, it's going to fucking cut. 
it's going to cut like a motherfucker. So, Absolutely. you know, that's the kind of confidence that the customer needs to have. And I know as of late, you know, I've been trying to work with some of our guys and, you know, they're getting it, but they're struggling a little bit, you know, as our, quant- you know, quantities go up, we're pushing the guys a little bit harder. And it's hard because when you're ment- mentoring sharpeners, I know, I know what it's like to sit in front of that fucking wheel and it, it just, you can get lost, you can get off in left field, <laughs> you know, so I'm compassionate with those guys. You know, there's other guys within our organization, you know, dad, don't throw the hammers through the walls like I used to. We just fucking, if they can't do it, we'll reallocate them, retrain them or get rid of them. Right. You know, but um, with the sharpeners, it's a different aspect because that is that is when that blade becomes alive. Right. I mean, that's the last touch. That is the last thing. You know, just like a sword or a anything. You know, the, the the polisher is the last final fucking say on that blade, and how well it's going to cut or perform. You right. know, it doesn't matter how well it's been forged or how well it's articulated. If it's done the proper way and it's sound and it's fucking sharp, it wins the contest. Yeah. You know, so that's a you know that's a big thing. And you know, doing a tutorial, maybe we should do a tutorial for somebody. Maybe, you know someday. what? Actually, that's a you know, really good idea because I I talk to so many guys that are doing kind of creative shit, but they can't even sharpen their own knives. Right. Right. You know, it's like they're going about it the wrong way because I don't care how much you know you get on YouTube or TikTok or fucking only hands or whatever you're fucking doing. The only hands. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta like you told, you know, our guy today and you know, building that kind of confidence with these guys. You know, they can't be intimidated. They need to be reinforced that they can do it. You know, like I've told a lot of these new guys, I mean, you come get me. It's like, Tony, I just want to make you happy. It's like, you don't want to make me happy, bro. <laughs> I want you to do your job. You know, it's not about making me happy. It's about making this customer confident and satisfied with the work that they're Absolutely. getting done. You know, Absolutely. so that's a big thing. You know, mm-hmm. that's a big thing. I know it's Monday. And nobody thinks, well, it's just sharpening a knife. Yeah. There's those that can, and then there's those who melt metal, yeah. you know, and there's a, there's a term for that, you know? So, <laughs> you know, that's a big thing. And, and that's something that you've really, really done extremely, extremely well outside of all your designs and your creativity. But uh, I don't care what anybody says. That's the essence of the blade. Right. Yeah. In it's, a big, big way. It is. I mean, if the knife doesn't cut, it's. It doesn't it, fucking cut. It, now, most of the stuff that we make, I get it. I mean, I mean, you get a fucking 121-1 or an Ultratech or something. It's a stabbing weapon. You know, right, if you, exactly. if you, yeah, if you want something with a bigger geometry or something that's a little bit more utility, you know, there's better options in that right. respect. You know, exactly. don't expect an Ultratech with a tiny little fucking bevel, yeah, you know, to, be, to, 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 to do the same there, thing yeah. that, 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 uh, you know, uh, you know, one of your, what, what's name some of your folders, like your, uh, like the Wraith or the, the Wraith prior, or the prior, any of those you know, ones. So yeah. They, they have, have real high, real high bevels, high and, bevels like and they're good for cutting. They're good yeah. for everything. It can, yeah. Everything could be used as a weapon, right? but you, you know, you get a little slender blade a little dagger blade yeah. you know and these guys expect it to fucking you know to shave fucking you know whatever else right, i mean right. we can get it yeah. to that point but it's it's a little bit of a different utility i think exactly you know and i think a lot of companies struggle in that respect well you know? i think it also has to do with the consumer um consumer perception. perception that's the word thank you uh you know they think because they get that big knife and it's super fucking sharp and you could literally cut air with it that 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 little knife should cut too but they just don't understand i used to battle guys all the time yeah. i mean it's it's always been a bitch i mean luckily i've been able to do what i can do but man i used to get i mean in my early time in my career you know, making Nemesis or making Dragon Slayers and making those fucking pieces, man. It was a fucking motherfucker. Because these guys would be like, well, this is not sharp. It's sharp. I could put it through your fucking head. <laughs> you know, I could, you know, run you through the ribs and it would it would shave hair. But it's yeah. just like these guys would crucify me for mm-hmm. this stuff. And and that's why, like I said, working with Reeves, you know, is, a, is an amazing thing. Because, you know, when he did his knives, I mean, he took, he taught me the same thing. Right. You know, and it's like, you know, how sharp, you know, because at the time it was like, how sharp can a knife get or what should it be? I mean, I didn't know. He said, and he sent me this little, you know, Sabenza. He said, you fucking make it like this. He said, when you make them all like this, you're going to be okay. And when I got it, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, me fucking, you know. Yeah, pss, 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 yeah, pss, yeah. Pss, and I'm like, how the fuck am I going to do I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. He says, you can do it. Get a bigger fucking can of elbow grease, you would yeah. tell me. Yeah. You know, he'd say, fucking man up, man. Just fucking do it like this. Do it like I tell you. Nobody cares. Work harder. Work harder. That's right. 
That's right. <laughs> so I remember the, you know, the, the, the first ones and how to sharpen a knife and everything else. And it was always, you know, something that people have always prided. They're like, oh my God, back in the nineties, Tony used to do the polish edge. Yeah. Cause that's how Chris taught me how to do it. I yeah. mean, I wish yeah. I could spend that amount of time and, <laughs> and whatever else. I think, you know, we, we, we do a, a good, good job getting our, our knives out the door as sharp as they can be. Absolutely. And, um, but that's a big deal. That's yeah. a big deal. It really you know? is. It really I couldn't is. imagine, you know, think about it. If you couldn't sharpen a knife, see the struggles you would have. Oh my gosh. You know, uh, I don't think we'd be where we are if I couldn't sharpen yeah. a knife. For sure. Absolutely. hundred percent. They overlook a lot of shit when the knife is really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's a fact. It's true. It's a fact. It's true. So outside of that, I know you're now in, you're in Palm Bay. And, yeah, Palm uh, Bay, Florida. I've uh, I moved back home. We're yeah. originally from that area. Palm Bay is not where we're from. No, I get uh, it. But it's it's you know it's north of Vero Beach a little bit. Um, you know I have a two two little bays right there in Sebastian, which is really close to Vero Beach. Yeah, you know, six thousand square feet. We have uh, several CNCs. We got our own shop. We make some of our own stuff uh in-house uh yeah. you know all of our guys i know you uh, even get some shit from us don't you oh yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I i i purchased some springs and some locks and stuff like that yeah. i i yeah. try to uh make uh some of the line modular if you will to yeah. you know keep uh keep from having thousands of parts across you know just a handful of oh we know it's a bitch yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know we get we get some parts from you i have another oh yeah i'm up in pennsylvania yeah but anything we do or make is here stateside there's yeah. nothing that we don't get overseas i mean granted there are some stock screws like from mcmaster car that we purchase you're gonna get you know, what you're we, gonna yeah, get we get, you're gonna get could, what you it get. could come from anywhere at that point there's, you know that's, there's no that's telling. a fact they they source that stuff from, and and good thing for fucking mcmaster car yeah. because i wouldn't be in business today <laughs> right? mcmaster car yeah um, they, kudos to them any 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 anything the fucking you, yellow you can, book yeah, that was the, the bible to success yeah, they still for us send those out <laughs> occasionally <laughs> i get one every couple years now i love it i love it yeah and jess is like i'm throwing this away I'm like, don't throw it away, please. I never it look away. at it, but don't throw it away. I know. <laughs> because you can just oh go online God. now and type whatever you want, and it, it pulls it up. So, but yeah, no, our little <laughs> shop. We have a couple, couple kick ass employees. They do a, do a wonderful job. Yeah, you had told you know, me you got a couple people. Yeah, that are, they, they, they've been investing some we time. We just put a things, put so. a couple new people on, <laughs> and uh, we're we're looking to hire more people. Uh, you know, Heretic Knives is hiring, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, sharpening. Full paid benefits? Yes. No, not yet. No, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yet. <laughs> We're looking into it though. Yeah, I guess gotcha. it's, it's it's one of the, one of those things. It's know, hard. It's, tone. it's it's hard. You know, for such a small company, you know, the cost outweighs the benefit right now. Down the road. It might not. It's hard because you think about, you know, you think about the cost and what it takes. You know, a lot of people are like, well, I only cost you $27 an hour. No, no, you, no, don't. you don't. They don't understand the <laughs> burden cost that goes behind, right. you know, uh, each and every one of our associates. Exactly. You know, you by the time you add in their insurances and their paid benefits and everything else that goes into that and everything as a consortium as a whole, you know, the burden cost of an employee is a lot higher mm -hmm. than what I ever imagined. Right. You know, and then you think about the time you invest, the time you spend training, everything else, you know. So that's why we, we, we do the very best. A lot of people are like, well, your, you know, requirements are too. No, I require you to show up. I require you to fill out an application and at least be capable of, you know, saying who you are. And, yeah. you know, you don't have to babble me with fucking bullshit. Exactly. But, you know, typically if you could find those diamonds in the rough, like we've talked about before, and um, they have the aptitude to say, hey, look, it, I really dig what you're doing. I really want to learn. And, you know, they're going to make mistakes, man. But as long as they're, the, you know, they man up to the mistakes and they do whatever and they could follow your right. lead, you know, it, 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 the biggest thing, it pains me. You know, it's like, you know, I walk in the shop always at the wrong time. I'll always find the, the, the bad parts. And then I'll walk in, somebody will be on fucking Facebook it's, or something it's, like it's that. And it's just like, you know what? Curse. It's, yeah, it's, it's like the fucking it Marfion curse. You and pick I'll, up the one knife, fails. And pick it up fails, the, fails. The one knife over fails, here has a missing fucking fails. screw. You, you, you walk across the room and it's the one knife the guy's been working on for 30 minutes and it's all jackhammered together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Or, you know, and, you know, that's the other adage. You know, it's just like we have. Have our typical break times but you know i found that learning because you know we're tight because we you know we're also growing and everything else we got right. so many people so we're always fighting for toilet time but <laughs> i learned to do that during uh regular hours or you know what i i do i hit the restroom at break time 
because either on break time or lunch time, nobody shits on their own fucking time. It's true. That is a fact. It's so, a fact. ladies and gentlemen, that is a fact. If you need to use the restrooms, go at the normal uh, break, time break time hours at yep. Microtech, and yep. nobody will use them. Yep. <laughs> that's their time. Right. Exactly. You know, so it's just like. I mean, I remember my mom, you know, what little I got a chance to spend, worked at a factory position at Eastman Kodak. Kodak. And I remember her telling me, it's like, hey, man, you weren't fucking late. You fucking did your job. You had a fucking quota. You didn't fucking breathe. You didn't drink. You didn't smoke. You didn't fucking do anything until you were on your fucking break. You know, it it was that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's a totally different time and a different generation of things. But, um, you know, we've, we've tightened up a lot of different things, you know accessibility to the employee and everything else. I mean, we make it and that's why I tell people, it's like, look at, I understand what you're saying and it's my rules, you know, especially with the cell phone thing and everything mm-hmm. else. Yeah, It's just like certain people are gonna have them because we work off these fucking handhelds, mm-hmm. but everybody else, for why? They don't There's no the, fucking yeah, reason. There's so no reason. Exactly. a lot of people have spoiled it at the organization and now it's banned, you know, but, um, you know, it's kind of like one of those things. I couldn't couldn't fathom that, you know, so they do that on their time, but it's just like occasionally I'll find somebody and I'll just stand there. I'll be like, just stand there. <laughs> it's just like when you're fucking ready, yeah. let's have a conversation. What are you doing? It's like, well, I was just checking. I said, you know what? You don't have to fib me at this point. Right. I've been watching you for the last three minutes. <laughs> you know, <right? laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of one of that thing. That's kind of my pet peeve, you know. Right. So, so but all in all, I mean, we got a pretty decent organization. There's yeah. a lot of things that we're doing this year to improve, you know, our continuity, you know, training and cross training and everything else. But uh, yeah, I, I did, would I have ever figured that I would have been at a level that we are today? Probably not. No. You know, but uh, we had we had the aspirations though. We had the aspirations. We had, had the aspirations. Yeah, the Ernicum project was probably mm-hmm. a, a peak. I of think that was a real else. big turning point. I think for all of us, really. Yeah, I think it allowed us to understand that there was a bigger picture involved, and that right. we can get outside of that mentality of working in a garage setting or mm-hmm. working in a home setting. Right. You know, could we go back to doing it? The answer is yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know, I explained that today. You know, it's just like there's always that little bit that I can't that never escapes me to say look at this yeah this is my cell over here and I leave it even though I don't use it often it's there right you know because if I have to start over you know that's a fact you know there's some bit people in business it would be very difficult but I know in the back of my mind that's why it's always been you know people are like well Tony you're just a greedy fucking guy it's just it has nothing to do with that you know, people have no idea where we come from. You know, they have no idea where, how we got started. Right. They have no idea uh, uh, of the sacrifices our family made to get where we're at today. And, um, it, and it humbles me to think about that. So that's the biggest thing that people have to understand. That's why it's so important. Like we do the shows, right. we meet and greet, we shake hands, kiss babies, everything else. I try to make myself as accessible as possible within limits you know, within limits. I can't answer every fucking DM. I can't answer every fucking email that I get and every inquiry. You know, some of them just get a heart. Some of them just get a like and it's just like, hey, look at man, I can't, you know, and some people send me a text or a thing this long and it's just like, hey, I love you to death too. But, you know, it, it makes it extremely hard to, you know, I make myself accessible, but in a sense, you know, there's a limit to what I can do right. without sacrificing my own quality of life or quality of time at work and everything else. And, um, you know, so it makes it hard. It right. makes it hard. Yeah, because know? the second you give them a, a, a little bit, it's, yeah, uh, it seems they like more. they pile on. Yeah, exactly. They want more. They want more. So Mr. You, Moff you do- Baloney, could you verify my knife from 1920s? It's just like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. dude, I wasn't even yeah. born then. Yeah, exactly. You know, but yeah, <laughs> I can. So <laughs> it, you, do, you do have to limit limit which ones you do take and which ones you don't. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Absolutely. I definitely learned that out the first couple of years, man. I tried to do every single one and it was... It's hard. It was, it was too it, much. It's very, very hard. And that's yeah. something that we're trying to work on. You know, even as an organization, we feel that that connection with our customers is important. Right. You know, whether it be via through social media, through how we present it through our packaging, how we present it through doing these podcasts, everything else mm-hmm. I think is really good stuff. You know, so because it allows people to understand that there is some fucking blood and iron and some fucking grip behind what we do. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people are like, well, yeah, they shovel shit in the shit. I've said it probably a million times in the shit machine and out come these finished knives on the conveyor. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's not like that. It's not like that at all. And for anybody making anything knows that it's not uh, to that extent, you know. 
I used to get, you know, the shit because it's like, well, you, all your stuff, Tony, is made on better equipment than mine. It's like, hey, dude, you want me to come to your fucking shop and work in your fucking shop? <laughs> uh, my level of quality is going to be my level of quality no matter what I'm exactly. using. Right. It doesn't matter. You know, just because I chose to invest my money, you know, uh, in equipment and in technologies and everything else to push forward, that was my choice. Yeah. You know, your mother and I, you know, as a family, we didn't own our own home until, what was it, freaking... Oh man, maybe 99, uh, you know, 1999, we got our first home because all our other mortgages were in fucking mm, equipment. equipment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we didn't, we didn't live badly, right. but you know, we always kept a clean home and, and ate together and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you know, your mother and I made the sacrifices for a long, the longest amount of time. Right. And, and still do today, even though it's, it, it's better now, you know, we've reaped some of the rewards of working extremely hard and, um, you know, the muscle memory of us working hard has is, is, is paid off to a certain extent. We don't take that for granted. Right. And, um, you know, we're still... You working know, hard. <laughs> still working hard. Still working hard one million percent. Yeah. And, you know, I've often looked at myself and said, hey, you know, when do I retire? It's just like, it's not a matter of retiring for me, Tony. It's a matter of succession. You know, when I can get to a comfortable point where either it'd be somebody within our family organization like your brother Sean, even you for that matter, it doesn't matter, Sydney or Adam or whatever, could start to morph and replace me within the microtech organization, then I could take a little bit of a, a proactive step to stepping back. Mm -hmm. You know, but in the meantime, until that happens, you know, retire what? What yeah. am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, right exactly i'm gonna come down to your place and work you know yeah, i'm gonna yeah. fucking I mean, do I'm something but some. <laughs> yeah, i work for food yeah and i a little bit some, of booze make some a little pretty, bit of shit. pretty good food so. yeah yeah you could put me on the line i could still get some shit done <laughs> that's a fact yeah no absolutely. but um you know and that's a level of respect that i think you'll always get from your people and from the industry is that you're still willing to roll up your sleeve yeah and um but there is a shelf life i will say yeah you know yeah. i've told you before you know uh you know i get that opportunity to finally pass off into the next level of things that i don't know <laughs> which means dead we're gonna die yeah, yeah. We're, you we're know all die. on that last little bit you know uh, that incident immortality you know i'm not going to be hoping that i wish that i ground more fucking blades yeah you know, i'm not and it's going to be the same for you and that's why i try to encourage you now i mean you're at that age where you need to again you're moving at a fucking rapid pace but you better you know my suggestion to you is to just make sure that however you structure your organization that it simply is not a shackle to your legs for right. you and your family because yeah, god forbid i think about it all the time like jesus christ what if tony gets sick yeah, what it's like, what, what, what happens if he has a fucking, right. you know, yeah. gout attack and his fucking hands and he can't sharpen knives and we'll be down there sharpening oh, knives? I'd be sharpening knives regardless. I, I, I know yeah, you would yeah, be, yeah. but yeah. you know what I mean? Well, no, I get You know it. what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Right now, dad could get, logistically could get sick. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get in any kind of trouble like that or anything like that. I mean, I could, but, you know, I did a little bit of a test over the month of uh, December. You know, I, it's not that I want to sit back and just fucking ride the wave, but... It was a good opportunity for me to recollect, you know, my thoughts at my age and um, step out of the organization. And guess what, Tony? Everything fucking got done. Everything got done. I got my reports. I knew what was going on. I knew what was happening, what wasn't happening. And guess what? They did it without me. And they can. Yeah. You know, the longer term of things, yes. I need to have, you know, I need I to have a succession plan into place so that I can do the things that I can do to continue to contribute to the next generation, which mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, your son and your daughter and, mm -hmm. and, and Sean's kids yeah. and potentially yeah. Adam's kids or Sydney's kids. If she ever has any, you know, <laughs> she's her own little person. Yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> Fact. But, um, so that's the thing, you know, and that's what, the, you know, I've often told the industry is, is that regardless of what they think of me, regardless, since 1994 next year will be our 30th year anniversary yeah, they've years. dealt with my shit for 30 years and they're going to deal with it for another fucking 30 years and another 30 years after that because of the way that we're we're programming our children next right. you know so exactly. that is a fact you know so uh, i know how you're going to teach your son and your daughter and i know uh, jess backs you up a million percent in doing that yeah. And I believe that Sean is going to be the same way, 100% with Adam and Sydney. So it's not me. I've just started this thing. Right. You know, who will finish this going forward will be, you know, 
the next generations and the levels of things. So, you know, the Marfione family is going to be recognized for many, many years to come. You know, so a lot of people who have wrote me off or wrote this family off so many times, fuck off. We're here to stay. <laughs> yeah, That's we're here to sure. stay. So regardless, it's because the mentality is, is that, you know, we've made mistakes and I'm not proud of some of the mistakes I've made, but I think it was a necessary evil. You know, when you could fall just about practically on your face, you know, at times you pick yourself up back up and you, and you, and you reinvent and you recreate, you know, some of it's a little bit of fire. Sometimes when I, you know, what, what gets me going is when I get a little fire burn up underneath my ass, I do my best work. <laughs> exactly. You know, when I get too happy and I get too mushy, I, I get a little complacent. But when I get a little bit aggressive, I think uh, I know where my hot spot is. You know, I could use that. Uh, I could use that to the advantage. I think you do the same yeah, thing. No, absolutely. You know, so, yeah, you know, I hear it makes a comment kind of, or something like that. It, you it's know, like, fuck you. Like, oh. <laughs> you. You might have said the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, I th and I think for the industry just in general, I think... Um, you know, we have fought very hard as a family to right. keep this thing rolling. And I'd say probably the biggest message to this industry is we're going to continue to make our way. Yeah. We're going to continue. Um, I'm not going to say that we're going to play fair. We'll play by the rules, but we won't play fair. And that's, that's a given going forward. You know, I've never fucked anybody that didn't deserve to get fucked, Tony. And everybody knows that for a fact. Right. That's a fact. Cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, tell me, outside of that, um, I know that all you do now is work, but yeah. uh, do you do anything for fun at all? Uh, well, uh, for fun, we uh, we raised two, two children. Uh, Who I adore, by yeah, the way. Yeah. T3 and uh, T3 baby, baby, and baby Riri. Yeah, baby Riri. Uh, they're great. Uh, no, Jess and I, um, we, we, uh, we're in it to build the company. So, you know, this time in our lives we uh we don't have much free time so we focus what time we do have outside the company on yeah. the kids so that's, yeah, that's important you know that's important because you know when when you and your your siblings were growing up you know your mother and i were always tr we were always involved yeah you know, we, we, we didn't, you know, we had our fun times by ourselves, you know, Susan and I would always, but we always, man, we had a fucking ball with you guys. Yeah. Always. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know, a little there, there wasn't a, there wasn't a, never a time that your mother and I didn't, didn't have a great time at every, we do weekend trips, we do spur of the moment shit, we would do right. whatever. We'd always have a good time. Yeah. No, you know? I promised little Tony, uh, he has this little chart at school. He gets, uh, it's a couple different levels up and a couple little <laughs> levels down, but there's a series of couple colors uh, that he lands on I told him if you get two two weeks straight of that uh, that white face and i we, we're going back to universal so sweet you want to want to know what happened <laughs> two straight weeks as of yesterday uh you know we're going to universal in a week so i think uh that's uh that's going to be that uh, catalyst, I hope, to uh, get us in, in Dude, that, let in me that know, mode. Let of, me know the date because I'd love to come down there and hang out with you. I enjoy those kids so much. Right. They're so well behaved. And, and Tony and Riri are just such a trip. That would be baller. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So we definitely definitely like to have or are going to start having fun like that. You know, like you, got, you, got like, to, like you used to back in the day. I mean, I remember we before, time. before we moved away from Vero Beach in uh, 2005, we, uh, we, we, like you said, we just spontaneously would always spend stuff. the weekend in Orlando or do something crazy or, you know, that's back in the day when dad had a little clout and I could call the ho fucking hotel fucking yeah, hotel and be like, hotel, Hey, I'm coming like, in. I'm okay. Here coming. We okay. Go. Hey, yeah, 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 here yeah, you go. Yeah. Toner. Yeah, here's the your restaurant. room. Here's your, here's your <laughs> table. And uh, yeah, that's it. We could yeah. walk in and fucking own the place. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it, was, it was great at the, at the hard rock. And that was the thing that was such a great, great memories. Yeah. Of course. Great memories on everything that we've done, you know, and, yeah, uh, like I said, going back in that and, that, and that's the only thing I implore is I implore that work hard, ki kill it, own it, but make some time. Yes. You know, that's the only thing I could look back and say, Jesus Christ, you know, because there was, was some times I'd always be frantic to get back in the shop. I'd be like, I would tell your mom, it's like, I, I probably should get back to work. <laughs> you know, I should probably, I'd probably, yeah. she'd be like, fucking relax, go have a fucking drink. And yeah. just like, yeah. no, I think I need to get in the shop and fit. Trust me, Tony, I'll be there when you get there. Mm hmm. You know, you, you know, allocate your time and just, but do make time. 
yeah. you know, because I think for the, like the times that we made for you kids, your kids will remember that too. Exactly. And, you know, they see you working hard. They see you doing all these things. So you're mentoring them the same way. I mean, I will say some of, some of my greatest memories are in the shop though. I mean, we had we, great we, times. We, we did. We, we had great times. Know. I'm not saying it was all a fucking dud. <laughs> no, no. We had some great, great adventures and great exciting things that we did. And <laughs> yeah, there was some milestone shit that we did. It's just like, holy shit, we just built a fucking gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. In six months <laughs> yeah. after Sire yeah. the fuck off, you know? seeing the yeah. tools and seeing yeah. the stuff or the excitement of building a new project, you know, and, and that's what it is today. It's just like even even now, you know, working on it, you know, um, you know, I like working on the new stuff so that you know that drive is still in. You know, working on these new developments and everything else, I still get excited about it. Right. You know, do I like the mundane of fucking building 25,000, 30,000 of these things? It's just like the Ultratech. We've been building those since 1999, right. and yeah. I build 1,500 of those a fucking week. And I'm like, Ultratech, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. All right, here we go. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's just, but I like the new ideas and I like yeah. the new creativity and I like the challenge. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing is I think, you know, where we were breaking ground. And I think that's a lot of things that we did back in our day is I think, you know, and I could say this boldly that we pioneered a lot of cool ideas, Absolutely. you know, and it, and it set the groundwork for a lot of companies uh, down the line. I mean, for people who inspired me, I give them kudos for people who taught me things and taught me how to do different things. I mean, we won't mention names, but uh, some of it was good experiences. Some of it would be bad right. experiences, but, and not even really bad experiences. You know, I can go on to say, you know, it's just like, you know, for the, some of the people that mentored us, it's just like, you know, I'll, I'll say it for the record. I mean, even like fucking Walter. I mean, Walter could have fucking had it made uh, across the board. Think about where he'd be today if he just fucking let us do our work. Right. You know, get his designs and take it to the next fucking level. Take the training and take the tutelage that he gave us and take it to fucking market instead of fucking grabbing at fucking scraps. Yeah. Yeah. You know, thinking that everybody was fucking him at every juncture of the day. You know, the guy's a great mind and everything else, but he's just a beat up fucking old man. You know, trying to beat this family up for no fucking reason. What? Because we did what he, t he told us to do? <laughs> exactly. You're going to do it my way, boy, or it's the highway. Yes, sir. And it's like, yes, sir, we'll get it done. And then we do it. And it's like, that's my grind, motherfucker. <laughs> it's just like, fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck you. And I, I could say that where I am at today. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> we took everything that we've been talking, taking it to the next level, you know, and that makes me proud because we've given a lot back to this industry. Right. You know, whether it be in the way of products and, and people who, you know, articulate our, our products through selling them and they make a living for their families to us teaching other makers what we know and teaching them how to also make way, you know, so we've given back, yeah. you know, for as much as we've taken I believe that we, as a family, we've given a ton back. That's why we do what we do at Blade Show and everything else. You know, when we go to these events, you know, we, we do our thing, yeah. you know, so, and I hope that we can continue to do that. Now, we don't give away the, 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 yeah, the, the secret sauce, secret sauce yeah, yeah. but we do give enough back to, yeah, absolutely. to try to mentor, you know, the next gen, because who is going to be the next gen of people? You know, I see, you know, for my time, you know, I came in at a very young man age and everything else, and I, I grew up amongst the lions, man. Yeah. Was, What's considered it. the greats today, you are considered one of the last greats that came in that came that out of that period. fucking time period, man. Right. I fucking, I mean, Jesus, crime any sakes. You know, I yeah. was starstruck when I was a kid and still am today. <laughs> Every time I even, I can meet Sal Glester and I'm still as starstruck as I am today. Yeah, or right. I met, I met, um, who was it? Fucking Lynn Thompson just recently okay. at one of the shows. And it was just like, the guy actually shook my hand this time and didn't want to smack me across the head. You know, it was just like, fuck me. Right. You know, it's just right. like, wow, that's Lynn Thompson. That's a guy. I mean, I freaking oogled over his shit when I was a kid and would have to work an entire summer to buy one of his pieces or anything like right. that. Or even, you know, or Spiderco or, or the Diasis family or any mm -hmm. of that sort of stuff, you know? So it's, it's a big deal to me. Yeah. It's a big deal to me to be in it for as long as we have made a ton of mistakes but you know what yeah, what are who, you gonna do man you got to make a thousand mistakes before who, you make has it good. though right you know <laughs> well, according to the knife industry i've made them all you well. know <laughs> <laughs> love to hate me that's fine <laughs> i love you all and i i do i i appreciate everybody that buys into our products and everything else and we do listen you know and and, and that's the thing is we're probably more in tune i think with our customers now than we ever have uh, and i yeah, think that's absolutely. important because you know there once was probably a time or two where you know 
the Tony Marfione back in the day might have been a little bit more arrogant than when it was deserved to be done at that point. But that arrogance cost me typically. You know, if I said something stupid, I got I got it back in spades and karma would hit me pretty hard. But I've learned over the course of time that, um, you know, just listening to what people have to say, mm-hmm. you know, not taking anybody for granted. You know, I love going to the shows and meeting and greeting. It makes me happy. Yeah. And, and, and I take any kind of criticism. A lot of people are like, well, you can't blah, 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 blah. It's like, look, you can call me whatever you want. But if you have any constructive criticism, I'm going to listen. 100%. I am going to listen 100%. And I'm going to go back to this factory. I'm going to articulate it to our teams. And you do the same thing. You know, and I think for any companies out there, you better be, you know, in today's day and age, you better be fucking tuned into your customers right now. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. Globally. Globally. Because there's, there's no way to tell what's going to happen or what's going to be the next greatest thing. Yeah, because at the end of the day, what you like is not necessarily what the customers want. That's what I'm starting to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about some likes, uh, what are you drinking tonight? We got a... Uh, got a Japanese whiskey here. Mio. Mayo. I don't know. Mayo. Mayo. Yeah. It's It's a single barrel, 17. It's beautiful. Man, I had a sip of yours. It's wonderful. uh, Distilled 2001, bottle 2018. So that's a nice one. Right from Japan is beautiful, beautiful with Japanese whiskey. Hints of honey in there. It's super smooth. Yeah. It's awesome. No, I'm going to, after, after we finish the podcast, I'm definitely going to sit down and that's what I'm going (laughs) to drink the rest of the night. It's beautiful. Yeah, no, it really is. So for me tonight, I got just a little, uh, you know, Casa Azul. It's not a bad thing um, on a little bit of ice. It's always uh, kind of easy on the gut and yeah, everything else. Of course. But, you know, it's a, it's a nice drink. So brought to you by Casa Azul. No, just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I know you like the Japanese whiskeys and we've I had some really Japanese, good ones. Yes. But, um, Yamazaki. So is a, are we going to Japan this year? Uh, you know, I would love to go to Japan this year. Uh, hit the Seki Seki show. I I know you said you were going to be going sometime uh, this spring to see the I cherry am going, blossoms. I am going to uh, because the thing about it is, is for my fiftieth birthday in twenty twenty. Although the people think I'm much older than that, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Some people think I'm the dad. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It's like I met your son the other day, and it's like, hey, that was me. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that was yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I'm senior. Yeah, uh, that's T two. Yeah, little yeah. boy is T three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I wanted to go see the cherry blossoms, Tony, yeah, and um, of course, you know, that's so important to me because you know, for my fiftieth birthday, of course, it came during the time of the COVID. I had every, I had my entire trip planned out. I was going to Tokyo. I was going to go see the Olympics. I was going to go to Dubai. I was going to go just make a circle for like a month, you know, for that time. And it got squished. Ugh. But um, for as many times as I've been to Japan, I've always wanted to see the cherry blossoms. And, you know, I've talked to, you know, Koji or talked to Glenn or any of those guys or my guys that I know over there. And they're like, no, Tony, you got to go in March. Mm-hmm. You got to go in March. So I want to, I'm going to definitely try to get up there to, to take a look. I want to, I want to go do a tea ceremony or go somewhere, go to old Kyoto that, yeah, or that, something that like awesome. that. So, you know, I need to get back into my, uh, you know, get back into my Rosetta Stone and yeah. start picking up the yeah. language again. You know, I did really good there for a while, especially when Du was here. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it was dude. easy because you, we could practice all the time. But uh, but I miss them so much. Me too. Me too. I you would know. I would I would absolutely love to get back out there. I was almost going to go last year, but it was still really. It really was hard, Tony, because exactly. even even when I seen Kiku at uh, Kiku Misada at the um, USN, he's like, Tony, please, I invite you, come to the show. I'm like, I, I maybe I can. It's September. It's in October. I'm, I'm like in translator. I'm talking to him about shots and this and that and vet cards and all this stuff. It's like mm-hmm. you got to get the shot. And I even mm-hmm. thought about it. I was like, well, maybe. I don't know, man. I don't. No, I'm no. not going to get the fucking right. shots. Exactly. There was I'm not going to do it. I, and, and then of course, October one, they they rescinded all that stuff, and it was kind of too late to make plans. Right. Exactly. But you know, for me, not so much. But I miss I miss Japan mm-hmm. so much. I've only been twice, but it, both times were, oh they were it was a great time. It was always Koji, a great time. I've Koji never had a fucking the temples bad time. and stuff like that. Oh my god, it's the best. It took me around, and it was just. Absolute. getting on the bullet train that was a lot of fun that is yeah, the bomb it was it was a yeah. real good time no i would absolutely love to make it yeah, the last time i was there you know i got a chance to meet with some of the guys who forge mm-hmm. some of the guys who polish you know guys who do sukumaki do the yeah. koshirai and stuff like that and you know that's the stuff i love and then just spending time with koji and and spending time with the family members was always a good thing mm-hmm. You know, so I hope to get back there. I'm definitely going to go for the the blossoms. Um, and I just, That'll be really I'm cool. just going to go do it. I don't care. 
you know, if I go or go by myself or whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Right. I'm not afraid to travel alone, you know. Right. But uh, I need to see Sometimes this. You, you know, need the, a little bit alone. The, la the last like 12 months, I, I've I've been in a position where. You know, I get it, man. I'm getting a little bit older, but I've I've had a couple instances where, you know, I've I feel like I've brushed my, you know, brushed death off me a few times and it's it's Minigun waking incident. me up enough to to say, Hey, look at, you know, you know, what's gonna be the most important thing for you now? You know, I don't wanna be stroking out when I'm on the fucking grinding wheel. You know, I'd rather be stroking out fucking overlooking Mount Fuji or something, right. you know, or, or or swimming with the sharks or doing something crazy or or just whatever, you know, eating but uh, the poisonous blowfish over in Japan. Yeah, yeah, eating something. the blow poisonous blowfish yeah, in Japan something. would be yeah. totally dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I mean, as far as travel is concerned, you know, for, you know, for your dad, I think, um, you know, my, you know, the org the microtech organization has now allowed me to be able to have some freedoms. Right. You know, I know that I have my judicial responsibilities and I, I got a lot of work to do still yet to pave the path in my life. Like I said, my life is not mine. My life is yours and your children's. Right. And I get that. And the same with your mom. You know, we've talked about this. You know, our our paving of our path is not ours. It's for you and your generations next, which is fine. But in the meantime, you know, I think that if, uh, you know, during your tutelage and your training and even for your brother, you know, he could hold on. You know, he could hold the factory. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to surround ourselves with a good enough uh, people within our organization at 188 or 189 people i think we got now which is a big deal nice. you know that they they function very well they function very well and they encourage me to take time because it seems like you get most of my creativity when i come back i remember coming back just into you know just right after the new year they're like i remember uncle mike is like hey he goes i know you've had fun i love you bro but he goes i need you fucking back in engineering right now i'm like oh shit <laughs> You know, and our guys are great, but they were just missing a couple little things on some of the new models that they needed to release at SHOT Show. But yep. uh, I know this podcast will probably get put in after the fact, but, um, you know, they'll see the new MSI and, um, you know, some of the new stitch and some of the new manuals that we got. I mean, your brother contributes a ton there yeah. and uh, I mean, we got a lot of killer. really great. I mean, absolutely yeah. beautiful design. Yeah. Cool pieces. I'm so, really excited. Yeah. You know, even to see Ray today, we get all excited and that fucker doesn't get excited over nothing. <laughs> right. It's like, Ray, check out this new fucking nuclear bomb capable freaking plane. I just got to be yeah. like, yeah, that's yeah, cool. That's cool. Sweet. That's cool. That's neat. So. Yeah. <laughs> burp, 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 burp. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah. You know, and it's just like fucking, but he was so geeked out on that knife today. And that makes me so happy, right. you know, and the response we've gotten so far on that. And, and that's some of the stuff that we're looking at branching out. We're, we're stepping outside of that box yeah. and that, um, you know, not dumbed up shit. You know, I told the guys, I don't care what you design. I told your brother, same thing. And you're, you're the same way. We're not going to fucking design anything. That's going to be a loss leader product just because, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to follow the lead of the entire industry, but we're certainly going to, you know, we're certainly going to challenge people as they certainly come up to, to, to piss in our fucking weedy bowl. Right. You know, so, you know, you see a lot of people now starting to step up. This is no longer, well, Microtech and Heretic are just the taboo companies. No. no, it's quantifying what we're doing. Exactly. So, you know, having companies like Kershaw and having companies, you know, um, what other good legitimate companies yeah. that I like? I love Kershaw. I like Medford. ZT. You got, yeah, fuck you got too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you, got, you got a couple of them. No, they're all good guys. Yeah. But uh, I had to say that, Greg, sorry, you're such an asshole. But um, <laughs> appreciate where I'm coming from. But, um, you know, when people step up and they make comments, do whatever. There's great minds in this industry and so many great dudes, great companies doing great things. But now, yeah, are they making OTFs? Of course they are. Right. So continue to challenge us. You know, when does Marfion work the best? As soon as you light a little bit of heat underneath his ass. Right. That's when I get going. So, you know, I appreciate a little bit of the fire as of late because uh, even for you and I, you right. know, we're working on a collaboration right now at the time that this probably comes out. Yeah, it'll probably you know, be these, almost complete by then. It'll probably be almost complete. So, you know, that's an exciting thing. We probably should have done a lot of, you know, a little bit earlier on, but I think now's the time. It is. So, because of all the different variety of OTF that's coming out sure. and all the different companies that are, are coming out, I think, uh, you know, doing this collaboration will definitely kind of set the new bar i hope uh and uh definitely make anybody who thinks that they are gonna one-up us think again you know, there's a difference <laughs> you know there's a difference as we've seen in the past you know when you get companies that you know want to do their own thing and compete a little bit but there's been a few companies that have 
you know, try to come up and wave the, you know, wave a tail in our face Thanks, or do it arrogantly. Um, be prepared to get what you're going to get. You know, it's like, oh, well, I just, all I did is poke his shirt and he roundhoused me. Oh, wow. Be prepared to get what you're going to get. You know, so not taking away any capabilities from any companies, right. but, you know, we're going to protect what's ours. Exactly. You know, um, you know, we have a, a, a very good market share and everything else. And even between you and I, you know, people have always thought that we were just constantly at, you know, the bump into the heads. And, and that's been good because we have in the past. We have, we've toiled, but we're still family and we're going to still coexist. I support what you do. And I always told you for as long as you're making high quality products and you're doing ethically the right thing, I'm going to support you to the day I fucking die. And that's a fact, you know, so, you know, I see what you're doing. You're doing a good thing. And, and then I look at our industry and I go, Hey, look at this is where we're going to be. And this is where we're going to continue to gain ground. We got to continue to be innovative, right? You know, and I commend these companies. I do it for all of them. I mean, I know the rigors of making these fucking knives, and any one of them making knives on this soil know the fucking rigors of making anything in the fucking U.S. Uh, to, date, to today's standards is a challenge. So I commend companies that are continuously doing this here. Right. You know, I know, I think it's the AKI and all the other stuff that are yeah. doing all this yeah, stuff. AKI. Doug, I love you, bro. I'm sorry. I know I need to get with yeah. you, but, uh, you know, they're making good gains and grounds and stuff like that, and I will participate better. And um, I know it's so important, you know, for a while there, I was a little butt hurt over some things, but um, yeah, but you, you can, you can support what they're doing stateside and not support that other law that you were yeah, talking well, about. I, yeah, well, I could be totally, you know, frank and honest on that. I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you're a, you're a hypocrite because you make a few things with Reich. So what? I make a fucking few things with fucking Reich. Uh, I'm going to continue to work with Reich. They're good dudes. They're making us great stuff and the people that are getting it's great. Right. There's a place for it. There is a place okay, for there is a place for it. But what I'm not going to support is manufacturing of automatic knives and knives components from overseas. Agreed. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to disguise this thing and, 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 and dumb up a fucking law that's supposed to be some Patriot Act bullshit thing, be lied to about it, and then have to support it. Right. I'm not going to because the minute we already battle enough in every company out there, I don't care who you are, from all the top companies out there to you, to me, to whoever has to deal on a daily basis of fucking whack-a-mole with these counterfeits and it's getting fucking old. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, well, Tony, you smashed my face so hard. Fuck you, okay? Mm -hmm. Because of the reason why we have to is because we have to protect our intellectual property. I've been, I've been sued before. You know, I've been told, hey, look, you're stomping on my thing. Okay, get it, man. Shut it down, man. I respect it. It's hard not to step on somebody's intellectual property because there's so much great stuff being patented daily. Yeah. And you never know, you know, whose name you're stepping on, whose design you're stepping on. So we try to work. I mean, these are knives, for God's sakes. They can only take a certain shape or a certain uh, adaptation to what we're trying to do. So, but the thing with the counterfeits is it's just, a, it's been a disaster yeah. and we're, we're, we're aggressively. So any American stateside companies that are doing this sort of stuff, yeah, of course we come down on it, Tony. Yeah. I mean, how do I go back to my people and I explain, well, well I can't make fucking payroll because of counterfeits? Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I go to battle tone. I go to battle for my company and my people and my family, especially with that in mind. Yeah. You know, I've never missed the payroll in my entire freaking life. Now, us as a family have had to eat some shit on the shingle in the past to make way. But the thing about it is, is everybody's always gotten paid. You know, people who can't make way, we do what we got to do. But the counterfeit thing is a serious, serious thing for this country. Right. And, you know, we, again, we don't play fair, but we do play by the rules. And, you know, all of our automatic, every fucking part in our automatic knives to everything that we do, which is 98% of everything that we make is made here stateside. Sure, and people sure can spring. disagree whatever they want. You know, if anybody would like to test that in a, in, in a situation, they're more than welcome to join us within our factories to prove us otherwise. But, um, you know, and I commend factories that do. But, yeah, I mean, I've had a little bit of stuff made on the outside. Um, but we're transparent about it. And That's I believe that any thing. company that is is doing that. And I know for a fact there's some companies out there making some stuff outside that is not quite 100% transparent. You know, um, I get it. You know, there's some companies that claim that they've been making stuff in the United States all along. I won't mention names again, but let's mention fucking Redbox there for just a minute. Yeah. Where was Redbox made? I don't think it was made stateside. Not even close. So, you know, call the kettle black or whatever else. Don't tell me you've been making shit in fucking United States exclusively since the 80s. Because you haven't. Because <laughs> you haven't. So, 
I'm not calling out my, you know, my, the, the, you know, the, these companies have been the companies that I've admired and cherished all along. But when people start calling me out, I've been transparent since day one. Right. And I will be. Uh, like I said, I think that's the most important thing is just being upfront with your customers. You have to be. Right. You have to be. You know, we try to back up our, 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 our you know, our, our customers a million percent. You know, and it's, it's not always easy because you get that one person that you can give them a free knife, replace their knife, fix their knife, give them a freaking gift certificate for yeah. Chuck E. Cheese yeah. and, Swag you know, this, whatever else. Other, and they're still yeah, fucking they're not still happy. Upset. Like you said, I mean, the Internet is a social media is a double edged sword, man. It could but go that one top switch, yeah, one man, fucking top switch, like, man. Long. Oh, ow, yeah. that hurt. <laughs> oh, ow, that hurt. You know, no matter what you do. And, you know, if, if people just had a fucking clue to know that we we pain ourselves everybody within the organization pains themselves to make the best fucking product that we could possibly do i mean that's still our strive that's still our thing mm -hmm. on a daily basis i mean i got people on top of people on top of people that is all they do is make sure that whatever goes out the door is going to be acceptable that's why i mean our, our last line of defense you know is the guys i mean they see shit i don't you know, and then I have to look at these trays of knives and go, well, I'm sorry, boss. This is your call at this point. But as far as I'm concerned, they're all fucking rejects. And it's just like, great. Well, and there's Christmas presents for, you know, myself and family members <laughs> yeah, for, for the, the rest next, of our yeah, life. Yeah, the next 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> but shit happens, you know, and a lot of it's due to just stupid little simple shit that yeah. you just can't see, you know. And yeah. until somebody points it out and they're like, yeah, you're right, you know. Other than that, you know, I wanted to talk about just, um, you know, what's your perspective on, on on your company going forward? If you had to just explain, uh, well, explain uh, it to your masses, man. Yeah, so, so there. we uh, we're not changing any dynamics or anything. We're going to continue making automatic knives. But uh, something that's brought been brought to my attention is that uh, you know we need to be making a, maybe maybe a little bit more manual action style knives. So uh, that being said, we uh, we uh, took a couple of the models we. We re redid them. Uh, most recent one was the Wraith. We we released that uh, in uh, the Texas, the tactile show, uh, the V3, and uh, you know it was well received. Uh, so badass getting, knife. Yeah, we're getting ready yeah. to go into manual versions of those. We redid the Medusa manual, uh, so it'll have uh, some more premium materials as far as uh, the manual goes. It'll have a full lock bar on the backside not a yeah not a removable one but uh you know it'd be a full titanium backside carbon fiber gotcha. face and stuff like that pariah uh we we split that from a double action knife down to a auto and a manual um and uh we got a we got a slip joint coming up so nice we should, uh, should see that hopefully maybe maybe blade show texas that means i gotta finish my slip joint <laughs> yeah. for that yeah <laughs> you know what and that's cool stuff because that's something that we've been working on i mean we made um kyle did an adaptation of a slip joint that was really cool got mm -hmm. a patent on it but it was just like this is gonna kick my ass producing this just make me i want something simple right just something simple because I, I like slip joints right you know i don't like the ones that almost cut your fingers off when you close them but <laughs> exactly, i like just exactly. this thin little fucking knife you throw in your back pocket right, you know because right. you know i travel abroad mm -hmm. you know i travel all over overseas and i always try to bring my knives you know i bring them but there's always that chance just as some areas are not really permitted and mm -hmm. a little slip joint would do yeah. the trick no, slip joint would even do the trick if i'm wearing a suit anything else yeah i'm gonna always have a gun or two or even another otf in my boots whether it's yours or mine yeah. but i like a little something just something slip in my coin pocket or yeah. whatever yeah. it's just nice just something something small something slim you know so uh we're definitely working on on stuff like that moving forward yeah. we're always going to be making otfs and automatic oh, that's yeah. what we're known for that's, that's our dna man uh you know we'll continue to push the envelope there and even like i was talking to sebastian gorka you know i did his podcast yeah. last yeah. night <laughs> and i told him what we were doing he's like what he's like what you you, you, the, you guys make the automatics yeah. what are you even thinking about yeah. and i'm like well we're just kind of branching yeah. out a little bit yeah well because that's what we're known for right. you know but um you know there's nothing wrong with having a, a, a you know getting in the game and making some cool folders and i told the guys i'll, I'll sign on to it as long as they're you know ha they have merit and they're they're unique and they have something new to offer right there's exactly. so much shit man you throw i mean there's so many neat folding knives i mean there's so many tons of them that are great but that man you throw them all in a freaking pile man 
same. They're all the yeah. same, man. So you gotta, you gotta, gotta make do sure something a little, st- your little shape different. Is, is unique and well, it's know, part of your signature. It's part yeah. of your DNA. So yeah. when you see it, you know there's there are certain makers like your stuff. And when I look at yours, I could see it from an arm's length away. I know it's yours. Right. You know, I could pick them up and be blind and know oh, my son Tony sharpened this fucking knife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fucking yeah. it's sharp. You know, or, or you know, or certain makers that I really appreciate and I enjoy. You know, I I like because uh, their stuff is very distinct. Mm-hmm. But some of it gets a little old, you know, and some yeah. of it blends in, and then you have all the crap from overseas and everything yep, else. And, absolutely. And I'm absolutely. not taking away. Let's let's no. just call it for the record. I'm not taking away anything from any of the overseas companies. You know, some of the companies like Reich, uh, Reich or what's the one, David Dang? What's uh, Riyadh. Riyadh, all those guys. Uh, we Knife, all those guys do great, great stuff, and they fucking earned it. Look yeah. at their fucking quality. It's amazing. I don't fucking care who you say or whatever they're doing. Their, their quality is nice. You know, even the stuff I, I, our buddy Liam Ma. I mean, he's yeah. having the stuff made on the outside, but it's per, it's, it's beautiful, stuff. beautiful stuff. It, you, know, you can't take anything functional. away from him. Right, I've right. been friends with him for years, right. and uh, I'm not going to give him a hard time for any of that sort of no. stuff. I've I own a bunch of it, and you know, you give kudos where kudos are due. You know, the guys stay in their lane. They're unique. They do their own thing, right. and, and 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 there's no fucking reason why they shouldn't be able to compete on our level. Right. But um, you know, the guys that sit here and fucking rape our fucking intellectual property and our trade names and everything else and try to emulate us poorly is is not, we're not going to take it, man. We're not going to take it. We're not going to stand back. I spent I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars combating counterfeits yeah, and um, absolutely. You know, I commend any company that it is because it's bullshit, man. We work very hard for this stuff. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, I've, I've anyway. just started my uh, my venture into all that, so uh, I'm waiting for the bill. <laughs> Eesh. Eesh begish. We're putting all these attorneys' kids yeah, through yeah. college. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. You know, I'm looking forward to this year. I'm looking forward yeah, to the collab. Absolutely, the collab is going to be big. Yeah, the collab is going to be going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking so. uh, we're going to start throwing some blood in the water, but I'm thinking. Uh, you know, we could get it done for Blade Show, but I'm thinking maybe, maybe, maybe dropping it in everybody's face in Texas, Texas. would be good. Texas is okay. not a bad challenge thing. accepted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> All right, everyone. Unless my son has anything to add, um, what do you got back there. Let me see. Oh, what the yeah. hell? I'm sorry, Daddy's a little tipsy. Yeah, it's okay. So we have. Let me see. Pretty sure I built this gun. You did. We have SCG five five six. It's an Amar Fion. Uh, 007 and it is yeah. it's one of the vintage guns we're very proud of of course it has the forward assist everything else but these guns were great <laughs> they dude. were they, they were, were fantastic. fantastic and i know i built this gun you want to know why i built this gun because i remember lasering the uh the radioactive <laughs> symbol on here because this was one of the only ones that have tritium we, we installed in the tritium <laughs> and in my my dumbass self you know put it up on the laser and spelt tritium wrong <laughs> you're like no just just leave we it. still just, do shit yeah, like yeah, that i don't yeah. know how we do it but so, we do it but yeah neat gun neat gun them yeah absolutely cool pieces yep. the stg was such a good time it was a good time lots of learning lots of learning so yeah cool beans who knows good, good trip down memory lane right there oh hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah good deal oh yeah Oh, cool that's it well so. this has been a good podcast i hope to do another one again maybe Absolutely. next time follow, i can get follow uh, up on the collab. definitely want to get just down here to to sit oh, in yeah, so we could do great. this would be a lot of fun yeah. she's got a lot of uh a lot of traction on everything that you've done and our yeah, family she can and recall a lot, shenanigans lot and everything yeah. else but, <laughs> but it's good stuff but god bless you tony um Cheers. like i said I, I i commend you i'm i'm extremely proud of what you've done and what you and your family are accomplishing and um for years to come i got your back years to i come. love you love you too pop everyone take care like share and subscribe if that's such a thing these days and fucking stay tuned because we're going to crush it this year in 2023 stay tuned love y'all